Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of How Not To Write A Novel. You might have noticed I didn't have a video yesterday. There's a very good reason for that. It seems I've run out of disk space and didn't have anywhere to put the recordings. And it took me quite a while to realise that that's why I was trying to record a video and it just wasn't there when I'd finished. Today... I don't have that problem because I have a brand new external hard disk to keep my recordings on. So that should make things easier. Maybe. Then today I had a problem getting a video uploaded because I... Um, 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 no, I'm not counting them this week. There's no no, no counter up there. Um, what was I saying? Yes. Then I was having a lot of trouble when it came to writing because the Wi-Fi wouldn't stay connected for more than 20 seconds at a time. Not having an internet connection turned out to be quite a problem because it stopped me being able to write using Google Docs which, um, you know, made it quite hard to make any progress. And I thought, even if I do a video, I won't be able to upload it as long as it's like this. Then in the evening, the internet connection starts behaving again. And then I realised that my phone battery is on 10%, so I can't use my phone to record a video. Um, but now it's charged, I have an internet connection, and everything seems to be kind of working. So, um, it's a little after midnight, but what have I done the last two days? I have been quite distracted today. Um, I've been helping one with a jigsaw again, which um, I, is a probably a good thing to do, but I should um, spend a little less time on it and find more time to do writing. But I've also done some writing today. I've written more than 4,000 words over the last two days, but most of it's on other projects, which doesn't really help when I'm trying to write a novel in a month. I've not even finished the intro yet, so I think this series is going to go on quite a bit more than 30 videos. But um, what I've written is I've finished off the chapter I was working on, the interview. Well, not so much finished because Julian and Alex still aren't there. And I did want them to come in at some point, but I'm really not sure what they would say. So I'll, I'll put that off to write that sometime in the future and switch back to a different viewpoint. This chapter is something a bit different. I'm hoping that this reads well, but because I've only just finished it, it's hard to tell. I'll look back at it with a fresh mind and see if it works. But this is what I've got here. George quickened his pace, sure someone was following him. His folks had always told him this would happen if he was out alone after dark, so he told himself it was just his imagination, seeing the things he expected to see. But every corner he turned, he could hear footsteps following. Not close enough to be seen, maybe around the next corner but one, or looking down on him from a rooftop. But their steps echoed, and he could hear them clearly enough to be sure they were in pursuit. OK, so this is somebody who thinks he's being followed. He's going to be mugged or something, maybe. Um, he's... Coming home late, took a shortcut across the park, and while it's pretty dark, he's taken the wrong turning, the paths don't look the same, and by the time he's realised, he's not sure how to get back home. He's ended up on the wrong side of the river, he doesn't know what path to take, and he can't see any of the signs because it's too dark. He thinks he's going to get mugged. This guy isn't worried about shadow drinkers because he doesn't know they exist. But this is a urban fantasy novel, so you know he's about to meet one. My plan here is that George is going to run into a drinker we've already seen. In this case, it's going to be 
Sullivan. But um, that's not going to be obvious to the reader right away. Then he's going to um, be a little worried because Solomon shows up to taunt him. Because, of course, they need to feed off emotion. They need fear. Or at least that's the initial assumption that readers expect to make. And then he meets someone who happens to be passing that way. So he's going to run into Yuki. And she is going to step in. I think I've seen a way to sort this out. Is She wouldn't save a random person. Well, she probably would because that's what got her driven away from her own people. But she wouldn't think it's important enough to start investigating the drinker and trying to chase him down, which is what I was looking for. If she sees this George guy and realises that the drinker's hunting him for a specific reason, he is not quite human. He might be gifted or unnatural. She can sense that there's something a little bit off about him, and she knows that the drinker is picking on him specifically. So she wonders if he might be someone like her. Someone who has grown up on their own without their kin around to show them the way. And therefore they might be someone like her who doesn't know what they are. And she thinks she needs to at least find out what's going on with this guy and keep him safe from the drinkers. She doesn't hang around with others of her own race, but she doesn't want them to get hurt because she knows there's fewer of them than there used to be. And she she would really like to have an ally who isn't going to grow old and die. Maybe she's not thinking about it in those terms, but that's part of her motivation. She probably wouldn't think about it in those terms because she's very much in denial. But that would be going on inside her mind. And I would like to find a way to get that across without making it too obvious without having her explicitly think of it. But, so she's going to save this George guy because she thinks he might be another of her kind. And then she'll find a way to try and find out the details without telling him why she's hanging around. He thinks using the standard-ish human viewpoint of you can save people, you should save more people. And he'll kind of push her to be the hero. I don't know if she'll pick up on that. She'll probably be thinking, it's not my responsibility, I'm just a human. While really in the back of her mind it's going on. She doesn't really care that much, as much as she wants to. Does that make sense? And she's not going to find out until way later that the reason there's a drinker after George is because he is a potential, kind of like the larval stage of a drinker. Not going to be directly relevant here, I don't think, but it's mentioned in the other books in the series that um, drinkers can't raise their own children because they instinctively drain the life force of anybody who's around them for too, too much time. That includes their own kids and a baby wouldn't survive. So they're always adopted by humans and therefore a young drinker quite often doesn't know what they are. They're an orphan, a kid who's been abandoned until they meet another drinker who kind of awakens their powers. And that's what George is. Um, I'm not sure how much depth we'll go into on that, but the mechanism behind it is already um, something I've written about in the wiki for the setting. So I can use that as background without explicitly stating it. And I think that gives... Yuki a reason to be interested in this guy gives her 
somebody who's pushing her to help people more and it um, basically gives her a connection to Solomon because he is he, Solomon's going to keep coming for this George guy and once she starts defending him that gives her a reason to investigate Solomon of course Solomon won't know what she is because drinkers can't sense other unnaturals they can only sense drinkers and potentials um, that's one of the things I'd previously established Yuki can sense other unnaturals well not directly but she can tell that they're not quite human kind i'm kind of digressing um but that's what i've written today um There'll be a link down there in the description if you want to actually read the whole document. I'll put in a link to the wiki as well. All comments on either of those would be very much appreciated, or comments on the video. If I'm spending too much time on one particular thing, then let me know. And um, I think that's all of what I've got to talk about today. So, if you... Want to see the next video when it's up a link will appear somewhere around there if you want to see the previous video if you haven't seen it yet there should be a link up there and i think i'll put a link somewhere in the middle for the playlist so that you can go back and watch all the videos in order if you prefer but for now bye